What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we see a day of indecision printing doji candles on the indices as we start bumping into very critical resistance. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today on SPY, we were flat on the day, only going down 0.03%. But you can see intraday, we did test critical resistance and some critical support. So we're back above the 50 EMA for three days in a row. But we do have the 200 simple moving average and very strong resistance right around 446.5. And that's exactly where we're starting to see a little bit of trouble for the bulls. So remember, the bulls are in full control in the short term with this very strong four day thrust. And today we do see a little bit of pause as we come into strong resistance. But so far, the bulls are still out there buying the dip off of the 50 EMA with that support level right around 440.5. So from here, you have to remember that the bulls used a lot of energy on this four day push. And now we're running into very strong resistance. And this is going to be a level the bears are going to want to attack at. The bears still have the advantage of a daily lower high and lower low situation, but the bulls are trying to reverse the bear trend. So right now on the daily chart, I would tell you that the bears and the bulls are being neutralized and it's going to be more of a choppy market until we see which direction is going to break from here. The bulls are going to be looking like they have full control of the market when SPY breaks above 458, and the bears are going to have full control of the market the next time SPY breaks down below 416. So this is going to be a very choppy and volatile range, and there are a lot of very critical levels within this range that you need to watch very closely. So first, let's take a look at the bullish breakout looks, which is the first one will be a break above 446.5, and then we should see another short squeeze rally that takes us all the way up to 453. And that's going to be the next very critical resistance. If somehow the bulls can manage to push all the way up to 453 without a pullback, I do think that is going to be the resistance that leads to the pullback. However, above that level, we still do have this critical level at 457.4. And that is exactly where the bulls are going to have full control of this market if they can close above that level. So those are going to be two very critical resistance levels if we do see the bulls breaking out above 446.5. However, you have to remember the bears are going to be attacking before you even get to that level. So from here, if we start to see a pullback, you want to see a break below the 50 EMA and then you want to watch for support at 438 and right around this breakout level at 434 to 435. If we break back down through the breakout level, that will look like the bullish breakout is failing the retest but we still do have that 20 simple moving average right around 430 and strong support at 428. In the grand scheme of market structure change going from a downtrend to an uptrend, you have to remember that we're still trying to get a higher low situation and that higher low with a successful bounce and breaking out of this previous high is going to be confirmation that we could be going right back into a bull market. So any of these lows that hold up as support, if we start to see another impulsive bounce, that will be extremely bullish. What won't be bullish is if we slice down through all these support levels on high volume selling, because if you start to see high volume selling, you want to be very cautious immediately. Right now, we see very decent buying volume and practically no sellers. So there's no reason to not believe this is a bullish rally. And there's no reason to not be looking for a higher low from here. The only thing that would prevent you from looking for a higher low would be high volume selling and slicing through these critical levels right around 430 and 428. So in the short term, things are looking bullish, but I still do expect to see a pullback from resistance, cultivating a higher low before we can get a sustainable bull rally. Don't just get FOMO and buy into this rally, not expecting a pullback. This is not going to be one of those situations where we just go all the way back up to all time highs without a pullback. Coming off of a very strong downtrend and trying to get back into a bull trend is going to take time and you need to see the proper market structure building up before you get overly bullish. So be looking for strong support during the pullback and watch those very critical resistance levels. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we have a very similar story as SPY, finding very strong resistance right around the 50 EMA. And we were down about 0.4% today, also printing a doji candle at very strong resistance. So you can see the bulls and the bears are starting to battle at these levels, which is very evident by the intraday price action. We could see the bulls were trying to break above the 50 EMA, but the bears came in and drove it lower. And we came all the way down below that support level at 347. And then the bulls bought the dip and closed it right below the 50 EMA. So from here, you want to watch for strong resistance right around 351. And above that, you have strong resistance right around 352.5 and 356. Above 356, the bulls will be looking very strong and they could drive it all the way back up to about 363 to 367. And above 367, we're very likely going to be back into a bull market. 
So coming off of a brand new low, I don't expect to see this bounce just blasting all the way back up and through 367. So just like SPY, you want to be looking for a pullback from resistance and you want to see a higher low forming. Take out the previous high and that will confirm we're getting back on the bull. So from here, look for strong support levels right around 344 to 340. And below that, you have the 20 simple moving average at 337 and a retest of the breakout right around 334 to 330. Any of these levels could be the higher low you're paying attention to. But as long as we're above 318, we are still forming a higher low. So if this retracement starts getting really deep, as long as we stay above 318, there's still the possibility of a higher low and there's still the possibility it will become a bear trap. But remember in the medium term, we still are coming out of a very strong downtrend. So you can't completely rule out the fact that this is a bull trap. So if at any point you start seeing high volume selling, slicing through a lot of these critical support levels like they're not even there, you wanna be very cautious because we could be going for another leg lower. But right now it does look like the bulls are out there buying the dip and they are looking very strong in the rear view mirror. So I am looking for the possibility of a higher low as the highest probability chance. So watch these very critical support levels. In the Dow Jones, we were down half a percent today. And again, getting rejected at that resistance at 347, but holding up above support at the 50 EMA. So from here on the Dow Jones, you're looking for strong resistance at 347 and 350. And the critical breakout level is a close back above 356. And above that, you have a quick trip to fill the gap at 360. To the downside, look for support right around 343, 340, and our 20 simple moving average at 336. And if we break below that, we need to hold above the higher low being back above 330. Otherwise, we are not going back on the bull and we're going down for another leg lower. So, so far, watch for these strong support and strong resistance levels and be preparing to buy the dip on a pullback as long as it's a low volume sell off. On the Russell 2000, we were down 0.88% and we see the Russell 2000 getting rejected at that resistance level right around 207, but holding above support at the 50 EMA right around 204. From here, if we break below 204, you're looking for support at the 20 simple moving average right around 200. And below that, we have support at 197 and the full gap close at 195.7. As long as we can stay above about 193, we'll have the higher low. And back above 212, we should be back on the bull and we should see IWM going back into a bull trend. On the RK ETF, we were down 2.72% today and we did close back below 64, but so far we still do have somewhat of a bullish breakout look. As long as RK can hold above 62, it is possible it could bounce and try to break out and the breakout level will be a close back above 71. However, if support fails at 62, you're looking for this gap fill down here at 54.7 and ARK-K is still in a very strong bear market, so there is a very high probability that that gap will get filled before we go any higher. So look for a failure of support at 62 to close the gap at 54.7, and if that level can hold up, it will be a higher low, and then we can start looking for the possibility of a continuation of the bullish breakout. If we fail at support, you're looking for a breakdown below 52 to bring you down to the next support level at $50. On the VIX, we were down 1.42%, and we see the VIX is closing slightly below the support level right around $24, and the next bullish development in the VIX will be a close below 20. I do expect to see a little bit more volatility as we get this pullback and form that higher low, but in the event the VIX just goes straight down and closes below 20, that will also be extremely bullish and we could get the pullback at a later date. So watch that critical level at 24 and the critical level at 20, and if at any point the VIX starts spiking back above 30, you want to be a lot more cautious because we could be going for another leg lower, and this was likely just a bull trap if the VIX does get back above 30. On Bitcoin, we're currently flat trading right around 41,000 and still holding above that 50 EMA. And so far, the bulls are starting to hang in there, holding above that 50 EMA and starting to build up support right around 40,800. Now, remember, we have a double top look if we break below 37,000. So that's going to be the most critical support level. And your bullish breakout will be a close back above 45,000. Above 45,000, you're looking for a retest of about 51 to 53,000. And on a break below support at 37,000, you're looking for a retest of support at 30,000. On Nvidia stock, we're up 1.06% today and Nvidia is getting right back up to that resistance level at 267. And so far, the bears are holding it below that level. If at any point Nvidia starts closing above 267, that's going to be extremely bullish, which means Nvidia is very likely running all the way back up into the low 300s. The bulls are using a lot of energy on this push and they're getting into very strong resistance. So there is the possibility we start to see a pullback from here. So look for support right around 248, 244, 236, and the gap close at 230. And as long as any of these levels hold up, that will be a higher low. Buy the dip scenario for a bullish breakout back into the low 300s. So look for low volume selling to buy at support. Otherwise, if you start seeing high volume selling, you need to be a lot more cautious. 
On Tesla stock, we're up 1.74%, closing at 921, which is the second day in a row closing back above 900. So it's getting more and more unlikely like Tesla is going down to 592. So we're getting very close to invalidating that price target. If Tesla can get a daily close above 937, I think we're back on the bull. Otherwise, you still need to watch for very strong support right around 900 and 827. If Tesla can hold up above 900, it's going to be looking very bullish. But if we do start to get a pullback and we can bounce off 827 and get another bullish breakout above 937, that will also be a very bullish development. So look for strong support around 900 and 827. And below 827, it's more than likely we're coming all the way back down for another leg lower. If we get that bullish breakout above 937, look for the next strongest resistance level at 996. On Apple stock, we're up 0.85% today, and Apple did get the first day closing back above the 50 EMA, and we're getting back above this support trend line. So from here, if Apple can start getting a bullish breakout above 168, we could see Apple stock getting back on the bull, which as you know, Apple is a market moving stock and that will be a bullish development. However, just like in the indices, we are expecting a pullback in the near term. So look for Apple to potentially get rejected at 168 and pull back down to support right around 164 to 162. And below 162, we could come back down to 157. Remember, as long as it's low volume selling and we're bouncing off support, that will be a bullish development. So watch the volume and watch these support levels. On a break above 168, we still have resistance right around 172 and 176. In the financial sector, we are down about a half a percent today in the third day in a row, closing above the 50 EMA. So we are starting to develop a bull trend. There's still the possibility we come back down here to close this gap at 37.5 before we go any higher, and that will be a higher low, so that will still be a bullish development. On the industrial sector, we were down 0.11% today, and we're getting very bullish price action and starting to develop a bull trend. So from here, it's highly likely like we're heading up to trend up to close the gap at 106. On the healthcare sector, we were down 0.39% today, and we still have bullish price action, and we're very close to having the bull trend. And on a bullish breakout from here, it's very likely we're trending up to close the gap at 141. On the energy sector, we're up 3.05% today and we're starting to see the energy sector bouncing back and still holding on to that bull trend and we still do have bullish price action. However, if the energy sector can't break out to a new high, there's still the possibility this is a lower high and we're going to start rolling over. So on a breakdown below the support trend line, look for weakness in the energy sector, which should be bullish for the rest of the market because this money is much better off in other sectors that have more weight by market cap in the S&P 500. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, while we are definitely seeing a lot of bullish price action and a lot of bullish developments, you have to understand that we are due for a pullback as we slam into strong resistance and we're getting a little too overextended. That doesn't mean the market is bearish and more than likely we could be heading back into a bull market, but you'll need to watch these very critical levels and pay attention to the volume. If at any point we start seeing high volume selling off of these resistance levels, there is still the possibility this was all just a bull trap. So be very cautious at these levels as long as the VIX is still trading above 20. Also, don't forget that I do have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm driven trade alert service that only trades the ETF TQQ and sends all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. With all of this market volatility, I think now is the best time to be a bank member. You can find out all the information about Bank Trade Alerts and learn how to subscribe by clicking on the link in the description of the video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis and bring new trade ideas to you weekly. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Training Discord community, you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.